Hello everyone and welcome to Python and Dynamical Systems tutorials. In these tutorials we present real and applicable knowledge of control theory, dynamical systems, optimization, machine learning, etc. In this tutorial we explain how to generate face portraits of dynamical systems in Python. To make the long story short, in this video you will first learn the basics of face portraits. Then, on this particular example, you will learn how to generate this plot in Python. This plot represents the face portrait of this dynamical system. These arrows are actually tangents to the state space trajectory. And here is one state space trajectory. We start from this point and the system will evolve and eventually it will approach its equilibrium point. That's obviously zero, 0, Before I start, I would like to mention a few things. First of all, those of you who are my subscribers or who follow this channel know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. And consequently, here is the post. This post is given in the description below. However, my suggestion is to watch this video first and then read the post. Secondly, it took me a significant amount of time, energy, and planning to create this video and this post. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. First, we explain the basics of face portraits. For that purpose, consider this dynamical system. This is a second-order dynamical system with two state space variables, x1 and x2. This system will be used as a test case for generating face portraits. This is the face portrait and this is a face portrait with a state space trajectory. Let us explain the basics of face portraits. Let us consider this general form of a dynamical system. This is a first state space equation and this is a second state space equation. Now the question is, what is x dot? The vector x dot defines a tangent to the state space trajectory. And this is a very important fact that you should always remember. This tangent is shown in this figure. This is a state trajectory. This is a current state of the system and x dot is the tangent. That is, this is a tangent to the state trajectory. The state space equations f1 and f2 are actually the projections of the tangent to the x1 and x2 axes. Now, this important fact can give us an idea on how to construct the phase portrait of a dynamical system. The first step in constructing the phase portrait is to construct a grid of state space points. This grid is shown over here. Then, at every point of this grid, for example at this point, we calculate the x1 and x2 projections of the tangent vector. And after we construct or after we calculate the x1 and x2 projections, we can construct the tangent vector that you can see over here. Then we repeat this procedure for every grid point. And after that, we simply need to plot these tangent vectors and as the result we will obtain the phase portrait. Now that we have a good understanding of the basics of phase portraits, let us explain how to construct the phase portraits in Python. Over here you can see the code I created that creates these graphs, that is, that creates the phase portraits graphs and that simulates and plots the state trajectory on the phase portrait graph. You can find this code on a GitHub page and a link to this GitHub page is given in the description below this video. As you can see, I'm using the spider environment. I'm using the spider environment mainly because of this fact. You can simply select a piece of code and you can evaluate that piece of code. And furthermore, in this window, you can see your workspace and the current messages. For example, you can type who's to see your 
workspace and over here you can also execute Python commands. Spider resembles MATLAB and that's why I like it very much. The first step is to remove all variables. You can do that by clicking over here and as you can see by typing whose our namespace is empty. Then we need to import the necessary libraries. We import the plotting library then from scipy integrate we import ode int this function ode int is used to integrate a state space model that is to numerically solve differential equations and finally we import numpy the next step is to write and to define a python function that implements our state space model here is the function that implements the right hand side of our state space model this function accepts x and x is an array or a vector of state variables and it returns x dot. To repeat, this function corresponds to our state equations. x1 dot is minus x1 minus 3x2 and x2 dot is 3x1 minus x2 and you can clearly see over here that the first equation is minus x0 minus 3 times x1 and here you should you should keep in mind Python indexing indices in Python start from 0 consequently x of 0 corresponds to x1 and x of 1 corresponds to x of 2. The next step is to define a grid of points at which we will compute tangents. For that purpose, we will use the mesh grid function. I created a video on how to use this function in Python, and I will briefly go over the basic procedure. First of all, you need to define two arrays x0 and x1. That is, you need to define x and y coordinates of the grid. And over here I will change this code and I will put four points over here. So let's see these two vectors first. Of course I need to evaluate everything and I need to execute and after that I can see my x0. So here is the x0. It's basically, basically a numpy array that starts from minus 2 and ends at 2 and there's 1, 2, 3, 4 points. So let's see x1. Here's x1. It starts from minus 2 and goes until 3. Let us change this value to 5 for example. And let's see the result. You can see x0 and you can see x1. Okay, cool. The next step is actually to create a grid. To create a grid we call this function mesh grid. Let's see what is the output of this function. This function produces two matrices. The first matrix is x0 and the second matrix is x1. Let us analyze the rows and columns of this matrix. x0, to explain the structure of these matrices, next to these matrices I constructed the corresponding grid. This grid consists of 1, 2, 3, 4 points in the x1 directions and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that is 5 points in the x2 direction. The mesh grid matrices x0 and x1 define the coordinates of the points. For example, this point over here has coordinates x0 of 0, 0, and x1 of 0, 0. And as you can see over here, this coordinate is given over here, that is, it's equal to minus 2, and this coordinate corresponds to this coordinate. For example, 
I'm going to raise this for a second, not to blur the main ideas. This point over here corresponds to this value of x0 and this value of x1. On the other hand, the point given over here corresponds to, the, to this value of x0 and this value of x1. Now that we know how to construct the grid in Python, let's see how to construct the, the projections of the tangent to the state space trajectory. To do that, we need to define two matrices. The first matrix is dx0, and this matrix will store the x1 projections of the tangent vector, and the second matrix will be dx1, and this matrix will store the projections x2 of the tangent vector. That is, these matrices will store the projections at the corresponding grid points that are shown over here. In this double for loop, or better to say in this nested for loop, we go over these points, that is, over the coordinates of these points that are in discrete time represented by index shape 1 and index shape 2. We iterate first over rows and then we iterate over column. Then, at every point, we need to compute, actually, the right-hand side of our state space model. And we do that by calling the function dynamic state space. Remember the dynamic state space is given over here. We send for x these values corresponding to these grid points, that is, the x1 and x2 projections of these grid points, and we simply return the value of dx over dt. Then, we store the x1 projection in this matrix, and we, show, we store the x2 projection in this matrix. And this for loop will completely populate these matrices. And after we do that, we simply need to plot the result. So let's see the result. And here it is. Here is the result. And you can see that this is a quite coarse face portrait. This is because I hear, here I have only four points in the x1 direction and five points in the x2 direction. And consequently, I'm going to increase the number of points. For example, let's do 20 and 20. And let's see the result. And here is the result. It's a very beautiful face portrait. The next step is to sketch one state space trajectory on top of this face portrait. For example, we can start over here and we need to integrate our state space model. That is, we need to solve the state space equations. And this will be our state space trajectory. To do that, we can use the function all day int. I made a video on how to use this function and it's pretty much straightforward. First of all, we need to define the initial state. In our case, we're going to start from minus 1, minus 1. Minus 1, minus 1 corresponds to the point over here. Then we need to define the simulation time. It's simply an array starting from 0, ending at 2 with 200, 200 time steps. The next step, of course, is to call the odint function as the first argument we give our state space model, that is, the right-hand side of our state space equation given over here. The next input argument is our initial state, and the final argument is the array representing the discrete time simulation points. Let's execute this and let's see the output. Here is the output. We can see that the output consists of two columns. The columns correspond to states x1 and x2, and the rows correspond to the discrete time instance. And finally, let us plot this state space trajectory by executing 
this piece of code and voila here's our face portrait this, this graph looks very beautiful okay that would be all for today i hope that you like this video if you like the videos i create please press the like and subscribe buttons thank you very much and have a nice day